let's bring on the guy that I consider perhaps the most important person in live streaming. Well, along with his co-founder, Dan uh, Gage Vandentop, he's the CEO of StreamYard, which is blowing up. It is a phenomenal platform. Obviously, it's what I've chosen to do all my live uh, talk shows on since the beginning of the year after using uh, a different platform in the prior couple of years for uh, with the same consistency. And um, Gage, first of all, congratulations. I mean, it's great to see the platform growing. It's great to see all the new features and new users. Um, since we talked in, in January, how, how are you feeling about how things are going? Yeah, that was quite quite an introduction. Thanks so much, uh, Ross. It's super cool. Thanks for having me on. It's super cool to be uh, back. It feels like January was so long ago, even though it's I know. Not, not that long. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 super exciting. Like Streamer is growing really fast, and it's it's quite a different entity now than it was in in January. And a uh, big part of that is is people like you helping us get the word out and and our awesome community over there. So yeah, it's it's great. It's been awesome. Cool. You know, before we get to, to, to the to the new features, because I, I can't even believe how quickly you guys churn out new features <laughs> and they work right out of the box. Um, what stands out to me is how good the audio and video quality is. And we have, you know, there's three guests on today. Each guest is coming from a different location. Whatever location they're in has its own bandwidth, may have its own bandwidth channels. Or, or, or challenges and channels, um, and and everybody's using different mics and different equipment and different computers and everything else, and yet when I bring on three guests or four guests or five guests at one time, the quality doesn't diminish. The audio and video doesn't come in and out um, without giving away all the trade secrets. How did you manage to pull that off, which – Seems like every other browser, bra easy for me to say, browser-based platform ha has really struggled with. Yeah, absolutely. So that's um, that's definitely a unique aspect of StreamYard. Is um, it's it's really the simple things that are really important about right. a platform, right? Like you can have all the bells and whistles in the world. If it's uh, the video doesn't look good, or it doesn't sound that great, or it's it's crashing on you, none of that really matters, right? Um, right. So that's why we decided to uh, do the back end entirely ourselves. So most of most of these other browser based platforms they rely on um, other tools that are designed for basically quickly making like a meeting application or something like that and rather than using someone else's tool that's um, probably optimized for a different use case we actually uh, rolled our own and, and uh, built on top of some existing open source tools and um, run all the video infrastructure ourselves uh, which which allows us to optimize for live streaming this particular use case to make sure that we can uh, get the best possible experience for people that may not be on the be best connection or um, be close to you, right? So what surprised you most from this uh, adventure, from the time you've started to where you're at now, uh, either about the product or about the community or or, or anything else related to uh, StreamYard? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, there's been a lot of things that have surprised me. Uh, the The most significant aspect was uh, probably the community and how how um, amazing people in the community are and how behind us they are and how helpful they are for growing the platform. Because I sort of thought when we first started StreamYard, I thought of it more of just like a tool, right? And how excited about, well, you can be very excited about a tool, but how much of a community can you have around a tool, which obviously you can have a very big community. So that was a mistake right. on my part, but it didn't see like, since StreamYard isn't really like a, it's not YouTube, right? It's not a platform on its own. I thought that would sort of limit um, how many, how, how, how much of a community aspect there could be. So it surprised me that how, how well our Facebook group has grown and how helpful people are in the group um, and how, how it really feels like people call it hashtag the yard, how it really feels like its own, its own place, which is, uh, that's been the most surprising part. And I, it's one of my favorite parts as well. What are some of the different uses that, that you've seen uh, of people who um, are creating shows or broadcasts on StreamYard? Do you have a few that stand out to you that uh, either because of their quality or because it's just so original or different from what you expected people would do on the platform? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> probably the most unique one that stands out that um, isn't really a common use case, but I always bring up because it, it's funny to me is there's a online exercise uh, group that that uses our tool to basically br bring in people remotely to do their exercise class and then they go to YouTube so they have an archive of all <laughs> the exercise videos. So that's probably the most unique one. Um, podcasting is, is uh, very common, which I wasn't super familiar with podcasting, so I didn't realize um, that there would be so many users from uh, the podcasting community. But since uh, video uh, is becoming a big component to podcasts where people want to sort of grow their podcasting uh, following by going live to these different platforms, um, that's been surprising to me. There's lots of awesome podcasters that are using StreamYard. Um, and then the marketers, the, the, the marketing uh, types that are selling courses and things like that. That's a very common uh, use case. Uh, a very famous internet marketer uh, uses uh, StreamYard named Frank Kern. So that was really cool to see him start using using it. We were pretty excited uh, about that. Um, but yeah, those are those are the main ones. I love seeing all the the, the bloggers using it, and, uh, right. and of course, people like you and Eileen and and I. It's it's cool to see because uh, one thing that people might not know is while we were making StreamYard, like we studied people like you very carefully. Right? We were we were looking at uh, like I, I watched your streams while we were building StreamYard. I watched I streams. Uh, while we were building StreamYard, I watched people streams like, who else did I watch? Like I, I watched Owen streams, like lots of these people uh, that are that are live streamers and some that are even using StreamYard now. Uh, I was I was watching before we actually built StreamYard, so that's very cool to see. Very nice, very nice. I did not know when we were introduced. You had already uh, kind of known what I I was doing. I want to bring in a question from Dan Norton. Can you play a pre-produced video on a live stream with StreamYard without screen sharing? Uh, not only using StreamYard. So you're, you're going to have to be using something like uh, OBS, bring it in as a virtual cam and uh, do it that way. But yeah, you also want to be a bit careful with that. Like I think Facebook wants you to put like the, the pre-recorded symbol up if you're, if you're doing that. Um, YouTube might have the same policy. I'm not sure. Right, right. Um, Anita asks, Anita Sonia asks, um, waiting for StreamYard to be mobile friendly because I want a mobile lifestyle, not laptop lifestyle. When, when, when uh, will we be able to host uh, interview shows from a, a mobile device? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely on our radar, and, and I understand that. I think the last time we talked, Ross, we had actually didn't have mobile support for guests, which That's is right. <laughs> an even more critical feature. So we at least have that now. So you can, you can join uh, StreamYard streams on Androids or uh, iPhones, which the and the cool thing is there's no app at all, right? Which I think is very important for uh, a guest experience is to make sure that they don't really have to do much in order to join your stream, really eliminate that friction. Um, but to go back to the question, uh, yes, I agree that it, we would like to have uh, an experience from the host side as, as far as streaming from StreamYard on a, on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. We just really wanna make sure that we get the uh, user experience correct because you're working with much less uh, landscape than you are on a desktop or laptop, um, right. but you'll probably see iPad or not iPad tablet support iPads slash Android tablets uh, before phones. But we are we are working on it. So let's talk about the new features that have come out recently. Uh, some of them are are just I mean all of them work right out of the box, which is just amazing because usually as these platforms grow and features are added, the features start to take away from the experience. I, I am loving the clean new look of, of the minimalist lower thirds and comments. Awesome. Um, you don't have to worry about covering up the broadcast. Um, it doesn't distract, uh, but you still get that information out there uh, for people. Uh, video clips. Talk about um, you can't play a pre-recorded show, but you can play brief video clips. Talk about how, how people can integrate that into their live streams. Yeah, absolutely. So a common thing that I that we saw getting requested was people wanting to easily do, they would specifically refer to it as like intro and, and outro videos. Uh, so screen sharing is works well, but it's sort of clumsy to have to pull up another screen and share it and, and bring it in when you're trying to just do like a simple short intro or outro video, like a maybe 15 to 30 second clip. So uh, we added a feature where uh, we call them overlays, uh, similar to the way you see that logo up there. You can upload an image and, and put it on screen. We added um, the ability to upload MP4 files as an overlay, and that allows you to just sort, uh, simply like click 
uh, your your video overlay and, and it's easy to play a 15 to 30 second intro or outro video. So um, lots of people are doing a really great job branding their streams that way as they start with a full screen overlay, play their intro video, and then go straight into the show. And I think uh, if you do it properly, it works really well uh, for that use case. Yeah. And you could use it as an outro as well, or yeah. even as, you know, if I wanted to play a clip in between guests just to give myself a Yeah. Say, for segments, I, I, I actually was thinking about doing that for um, our weekly stream is have different segments and just be like, okay, we're, I'd have to think of segment names, but just a quick clip to transition to a new segment. I think that could, I haven't seen it yet, but I think that would work well. Wow. Um, so uh, talk about um, what what you think of uh, of all the features, which has had the, the, the biggest response or been the most popular, uh, you know, in the last in the last six months. So honestly, it's not anything that's like super flashy, like it's not I don't think it's the intros or the uh, themes or things like that, like people really appreciate that and they really, really like that. But I, it's the simple things that I think are important. So. I, the, the most common thing I hear is how easy it is to get guests into the stream is like there's lots of tools out there, but there's usually some sort of friction like with them having to download software or having to connect a social profile to get into the program. Like there's always some hoops you got to jump through. Um, and then there's some issues as far as them getting their equipment set up. So we've really tried, and that's actually something we added recently too, is a, a mic check for all guests that join. So that it's very clear to them whether or not they're their equipment's working and then we direct them on how to fix it before they even enter the broadcast. So the, the most common thing I hear is just like, hey, I really like how you guys make it easy for me to get guests into the stream. And that's definitely something we try to prioritize. The other thing that, that you know, I, I love about the platform and um, John Stefano, who goes by you do it on uh, YouTube, but by Rigor on Facebook, says uh, he integrates OBS virtually cam with it so he can have full control over its video and i've been testing all these different workflows to just see what i want to go with and when i've come in through virtual cam from wirecast or i've gone out i know you have the built-in integration with restream that we're using yeah. now but i've had, i've used other restreaming services it all it all fits together so smoothly that you don't even know that you're adding these extra moving parts that could take away from the broadcast if something didn't work correctly. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's nice that, it, that you can sort of integrate these more complex tools to get some more cool effects, like bringing a virtual cam to do some of the complex stuff that things like Wirecast and vMix and OBS have. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, when you look at, when you look to the future, um, you, you're walking a, a, sort of, you have two different purposes, right? One is to make it as professional as possible. Yeah. One to keep it easy to use. So um, it, it's not just experienced broadcasters who can figure it, but anybody can get on and within minutes really learn how to connect their audio and video and, and host the show. Um, what do you think is, you know, are some things that you can add in the future that won't overcomplicate it or make the learning curve too steep or, you know, make too many features to where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm scattered running a show because I could put this on or I could put that on. Um, it, it's, it's working so well now. What do you look at as some things that you could add in the future besides the mobile, the extra mobile support for hosting that, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't kind of get in the way of your pillars? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question and probably something that people don't think about that often. But yeah, it's a daily struggle, right? Having to manage between Make, keeping things super simple and and delivering uh, features for everyone to use because believe it or, or not you often see a it, it's it's keeping a product simple and intuitive is a lot harder than just adding tons of features right if if we just added all the features and threw it on there it's actually not that hard to do it the the hardest part in my opinion is making sure that it's super intuitive to new people because I think often what happens in not just live streaming tools any tool really if it's not uh, designed intuitively as you jump in and it's just too intimidating and, and you just lose people really quickly, right? Because it's it's too complex. Right. So that will, ease of use will always be number one priority for us. Like we're, we're very cognizant of anything we add. How is this going to affect the first time that someone that doesn't know anything about live streaming enters this product? How is it going to affect them? We always have them in mind, which is why. So I think when we add features, you'll see them sort of tucked into other things. Like that's how we did 
intros and outros, right? Like you, the dashboard actually didn't change at all, right? You're just able to upload uh, an MP4 file uh, in addition to images. So uh, a new user actually had, there was no additional like cognitive load as far as understanding what was going on. It's just, you would happen upon that maybe like, oh, I'd like to do an intro and you go over to the tooltip and see that you can actually upload a video. So I think as we add things, we're gonna try to very carefully put them in places that you sort of stumble upon when you're ready to use that tool at, in your live streaming uh, journey, basically. So I guess sort of to give you some actual concrete yeah. information on how we might do something like that, is say themes, like we're considering uh, having an additional, I, I can't give you a date on, on when we yeah. would actually do this, but having a sort of creator outside of StreamYard that you, you would never actually interact with as a streamer for building more complex or custom themes with animations that uh, might have its own ecosystem on its own, right? To make a custom StreamYard theme. And then maybe you'd be able to uh, download those themes and put them into your StreamYard studio. But a new person would never even know that existed until they actually went out uh, looking for it. So I think that's sort of the way we're going to handle uh, adding new features. We're talking with Gage Van Den Top. He is the CEO of StreamYard, and you can check out StreamYard at LivestreamDeals.com. It's free to get started, and if you use the link at LivestreamDeals.com, uh, the big image of the duck there, you just click that and you sign up. You Even if you just start on the free if you eventually upgrade to a premium plan, you'll also save money uh, at that at that time on the premium plan. Or you can go to LivestreamUniverse.com slash StreamYard. That'll also take you right there if you'd rather type into the browser in the old school fashion. Um, so I guess when it comes to mobile, I'm seeing some conversation in the chat about um the size of the screen with all the different features and how you get them on and get them off. Is that an, is that an issue for uh, the transition to mobile is how we get these big thumbs to hit the right. Yeah. Right. That's entirely, that's the entire effort, right? Like put, right. hosting a screen, like getting it to just host from mobile is trivial. It's like, it's, it's all figuring out where to actually put things and how to make it an intuitive, intuitive experience for, for people. Um, are there any other, uh, you know, third-party tools that people have used with uh, with StreamYard besides OBS Wirecast on the on sort of before getting into StreamYard, right? You're sending your audio and video through, uh, you know, some type of switching software or a restreaming. Is there anything else that, that you've seen people do that's kind of innovative with, with StreamYard? Yeah. Uh yeah, there's like the the mix like hardware mixers are, are very popular. You're probably way more familiar with those than me. I honestly don't know much um, about them. But for um, like podcasters, often have hardware that they use while using Streamyard to uh, get, get a nice recording of. Yeah, there you go. So, so that's a nice as you sort of level up your live streaming. That's a good good tool to add to your feature set or not feature set tool set. Um, another interesting one I've seen is someone. Uh, so like some people have sort of wrapped their own call in feature, which is kind of cool. So if you have something, I've never actually done this myself, but if you have something like uh, Google voice and were to sort of share that as a tab with audio, you could get people to uh, call your Google voice number and sort of basically have this call in show on StreamYard. So that's a pretty uh, unique thing I've oh, seen wow. as far as wrapping in another tool into StreamYard. Another thing people use that's very common is, uh, Things like voice meter or, or loop back, which are basically software mixers, the same, same idea as an audio mixer, but just on your computer. And they've used those to do similar things like the call in feature or um, getting super high, or not super high, but higher quality audio into the stream and, and things like that. Yeah, you, April uses voice um, meter. Is there a way, Mike? Uh, Mike asks, is there a way to use music with art? Of course, comes in all the copyright and all that, but let's say. Uh, there's some copyright free music out there that uh, how, how could people play that that music in their in their uh, live stream? Yep. So you can do that with screen sharing because we recently added the ability to share the audio along with the application or tab. So if you just say you opened up a uh, say you had a video file on your computer that had some nice audio or even just an audio file, uh, you just open that with Chrome and then on StreamYard, you would share a screen and then select that particular tab and check share with audio. And then you'd be able to put that on screen with audio and play, play music or a video with, uh, with audio there. 